Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting September 17th, 2018 at 7.20 at the Deerfield Town Hall. Our agenda tonight is to review minutes of previous meetings, review the mail, take some public comment, and then we'll open the public hearing, which is a continued hearing on a site plan review submitted by SWCA on behalf of Hexagon Energy LLC for the development of a solar facility along Setright Road on properties owned by Chester Ostowski. Um, then after that, we go to any other business not reasonably anticipated. We set a meeting, uh, set a date for the next meeting, and we adjourn. We do have one request for comment from the ZBA that we can do uh, at the end. So um, our last meeting was just last week. We don't have the minutes ready, so we will uh, do them next meeting. The mail we did last week uh, doesn't look like there's anything new. Public comment, is there anything that is not on tonight's agenda that someone has a quick comment or question for the planning board? So you, uh, okay, then let's open the public hearing. I have to, I don't want to read the announcement. Yeah, this is good. I guess funny. So this is a continuation of a, a public hearing uh, from August 20th. Do -do 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 -do. Pursuant to sections 5400 and 2200 of Deerfield zoning bylaws to review plans, including site plan, stormwater and special permit submitted by SWCA environmental consultants on behalf of Hexagon Energy LLC for the development of a property along Setright Road, Assessor's Map 142, lots 20 and 22, for 2 megawatt AC, which is the same as a 2.62 megawatt DC, solar array on properties currently owned and farmed by Jester Ostowski. Uh, copies of the site plan have been available in the town hall during normal business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated, which is here. So that was posted properly. Um, uh, letters were sent out to abutters, and we held one hearing, and we continued it to tonight. So if I could ask the applicants to, to come forward, um, what we'd like to do is just get an update on what's occurred since the last meeting. And... Um, and then we'll open it up to the to the public for Sounds public good. comment. We have a sign in sheet. I, I should have said earlier, we do have a quorum at the planning board. Um, Max, uh, Roger, Rachel, and myself, John Wheat, four out of seven, so we can open the hearing. Um, other three members send their regrets. Are there any limitations on voting? Apparently there is. Um, in particular, for, for special permits that you need a... Um, supermajority of the planning board so we're still learning this but um, if if, um, if planning board members miss a meeting they can review the material on these are all taped so you can watch the tape or and or I believe you can go over all the materials that were discussed and get up to speed and then they're able to vote so so they can view outside of the, this contract. They could They, they okay. would view that outside of it. Um, I, I'm not sure what the test is to, that they ha have seen all the material and everything. They have to sign a form certifying that. All right. And then with the, 
the actual vote would happen at another meeting? And then the vote would have to happen when, when they're all here, when we have five. So um, tonight, I guess we wouldn't be able to vote on the sure. special yes. permit. Super majority is five out of five out of seven. So it's two thirds of the board over five. That's is that like town meeting bylaws or? Let me provide you the details. Oh yeah, she brought this up, but state state law, I guess. Um, I apologize. I've been speaking without the microphone. So um, what? Well, we just opened the meeting. I know. This is Pat Smith, our technical person from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Thanks. Thank you. So the rule that uh, Chairman Wade has been referring to is called the Mullen Rule. It's pursuant to uh, Chapter 39, Section 23D of the state statutes. And it provides the opportunity for someone who has missed a meeting to catch up by watching an official video or reading an official transcript, not just the minutes. They don't suffice. Um, and then reviewing all of the materials that have been presented. So any number of people can do up to one meeting in order to constitute that supermajority. You need, in order for a special permit to be approved, it must be voted in favor by five members of the board. So that's why it's important that you have enough people there, because otherwise you can't possibly even get that vote. Mm -hmm. So um, we will, we'll, uh, you know, we can, uh, on this and as on other projects, we can keep track of who's at meetings so that we can know if there's any concern to be addressed in that regard. And so would you close the meeting uh, potentially and vote at a later time, or how, how would that work? Would we come back, open up public comment again, and then vote? That's how we tend to do it, is, okay. is continue the public hearing. Got it. Um, just in case new information came up, I suppose we could close it and let the missing members catch up and then just come back for a vote. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes, I think. Sure. And if, in fact, you get to the point where it is not possible for or five members to vote, then it comes to the point where it's in the interest of the applicant to go ahead and withdraw it, because the only thing they can do is vote against it and then start the process again. And typically, if that has to happen, a town will waive the fees so you don't have to pay a second round of fees or what all. But those are... You know, hopefully we wouldn't get to that extreme circumstance, but that would be the, that would be the, the result that would serve everyone's interest. To the best. Okay. I can, I can, um, excellent. And, and just to confirm, you not only need five voters, you need five yes votes. Right. Yeah. To approve a special permit requires a supermajority. So at the, at the August 20th, our last meeting, six of us were here, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and four of the same six are here again. So it's really I just, uh, no, you were here. I wasn't here. For August 20th? I don't, I For the set right road one? I wasn't here. No. Hmm? Right. Go, uh, <laughs> Check to. But I did see the tape. Yeah, All right. There was, there was five. There was five. What's that? There was five. five. All right. Mm -hmm. So we got the. So, you so. You tested me, weren't you? <laughs> 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 He's tested. That's <laughs> 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 a yes vote. Well, we had a So, Roger, minutes. we can get you the, uh, uh, a form so that you can here. certify <laughs> that effect and that can go on the file and that will then make it another that. Right to proceed. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, we have a 10 acre, 2 megawatt. Solar project on Set Right Road. The last meeting we had, um, we heard a little bit about it, and then we had a lot of questions from um, residents about um, setbacks and stormwater and um, visibility of it, the height of it, things like that. Um, and there were some, you guys, I think, were making some decisions even at that time. But now we're back. You've got some revised plans, I think. Correct. Um, yeah. So why don't you give us an, an overview of, of where you're at, if you could just introduce yourselves and sure. give us an update. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Scott Reamer. I am a development manager with Hexagon Energy here, uh, working on Old Frontier Solar 3. Um, since the last planning board meeting, so, several questions came up, and so we, we went back and wanted to address those and, and be able to provide some um, insight and answers to, to what those questions were um, and, and address what we feel would be some of the benefits to the town of the project. Um, one, one clarifying point I wanted to make very quickly is in the, uh, the Greenfield recorder, there was a, a small but somewhat significant um, statement that, that this was going to sit on 50 acres, um, which is 
in, entirely out of line with the bylaw. The bylaw requires a maximum size of, of 10 acres. So this will be on less than 10 acres. Um, and below, it'll be 2.0 megawatts AC, uh, which is also uh, what the bylaw is written to allow, not 2.2 megawatts AC. So just wanted to clarify that really quickly. I did uh, comment to the recorder about that. I don't know if they put a correction in there. But we have a new re uh, reporter who's much better than the last guy. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to kind of make friends with these reporters. <laughs> So I just wanted to go through real quick and give, give a little bit of an, an update of, of some answers to some of the questions that were raised to everybody and then uh, let Kevin talk a little bit about some of the stormwater. But um, some of the benefits that we see the Old Frontier Solar 3 project providing to the town is first off, and, and this is a standard thing that gets said, but it, it will be enough renewable local electricity produced to power approximately 300 homes um, in the region. There will be, through pilot agreements and real estate taxes, um, an excess income of $500,000 or more to the town um, over the 20-year life of the project. So we're, we're nailing down those numbers exactly with the Board of Assessors right now, but it will be a minimum of $500,000. Um, and so that will be a, a financial benefit. There will also unless be... Unless they counter with less, yeah, unless which they we don't anticipate. So. <laughs> um, reliable income to the landowner, um, who's a, a longtime local resident of the community and, and also to his family. Um, uh, providing some retirement income for him and allowing him to hang on to the property. Um, improved groundwater infiltration in that area based on um, the soil stabilizing effect of our planter mix that we're going to, going to be placing around it. We won't be putting gravel or even just plain grass. We'll be planting a pollinator friendly um, planter mix to basically help the soil absorption in, improve and increase um, and, and help mitigate some of the runoff in that area. Um, another benefit of that is the, the fostering of, of bee culture in the area, which should ideally help improve the, uh, the agricultural production in the area. Um, so that, that's another one, and then increased agricultural yield. One of the things that came up last time was, was this height, and I don't know exactly, it was, it was a slip, I believe, that, that our original application said these would be 10 to 12 feet above the ground, that that's entirely wrong. Um, at a maximum height, uh, they will be eight foot above great mean ground level. Um, and what I mean by maximum height is not that they'll be consistently eight feet above ground level. These will be on a single axis tracker, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. But throughout the day, it'll track the sun from east to west. And when I say a maximum of eight feet, I mean that at its, at its zenith or at its, its most westward leaning or most eastward leaning height, the, the tip will be below eight feet. So, you know, on average height, when they're flat, they'll be closer to six feet instead of eight. Um, yeah, similar project with using a single axis tracker because there's a, a little bit of, of question around it. They, most of the Massachusetts projects that have been built are on a fixed tilt system. So anything you see driving around will be fixed tilt. Um, but we provided a profile of a project that some of our, our members had worked on in Summers, Connecticut, just, just south of here, for a five megawatt project or 4.999 megawatt project. They uh, successfully implemented the single axis trackers in the region, and, and so we provided a, uh, an industry uh, journal coverage of that project in, in our updated application to go through that. Um, we also provided an independent analysis that was conducted across five states. W one of the questions that was asked was about the impact on real estate values in, in the area. Um, this, this analysis found that in rural residential areas, which is what this parcel is zoned as, rural, rural agricultural RA, um, there was no significant impact on property values. Um, and so we, we can talk through that a little bit more, but we provided the, the whole report. It uses a match pair analysis to look at projects that, that were built near houses or houses that were near projects that hadn't been built and houses that hadn't been um, near projects and compares the values over time and um, shows uh, no, no noticeable impact on those. Um, some questions had just come up about who we were as a company. Um, so we provided our, our formal statement of qualifications as well. I have a few extra copies here that I'd be happy to, to show. But just as a little bit of a, a background, we've, we've, our, our members have developed over 7,000 megawatts of energy projects across uh, over 17 states. And that's about uh, representing about $1.5 billion of, of investment. However, that said, um, we, we really pride ourselves and try to, to get involved on, on a local level and, and hear what the desires and needs of the community are so that we're, we're not just you know, just coming in from outside with no idea of what's going on. And um, we're working towards that, but I have the statement of qualifications here. We also put together a sightline analysis from, uh, 
for the project. So standing at about 33 set right road, if you were a six foot individual looking and, and with, the, um, with the screening buffer, which will show a, a visualization of this momentarily, the screening buffer will block the project from site. Um, and the project is well over 1,000 feet away from uh, the, the nearest residence. It's closer to, from 33 set right, it's 1,100 feet. And that's the, that's the forward edge of it, not the, not the rear end. By the, by the end of it, it's about half a mile away, approximately. Um, we provided an updated stormwater report as well that shows that this is a, a low, uh, lid, low impact development um, site design credit two project that, that should meet all of the town's requirements. And so that's included in there as well. We'll talk through that a little bit. Um, and then we, we uh, revised our plan to show buried power lines across the main, the main side of the field um, with the hope of, of continuing to be able to run um, basically shooting eastward from set right road, being able to run above ground there, but, but we can talk about that to, to consider bearing all those lines as well. And then uh, another thing that came up was how many truck trips were going to be involved in this project. We estimate, depending on the size of the truck, um, uh, approximately total for the whole project, 60 to 70 truckloads throughout the, the whole uh, construction process. And then it'll be about one, one truck trip per month and that not even a, a large truck at that point. To, uh, to maintain it throughout the life. So we don't anticipate a significant amount of traffic after the initial construction. And even there, that'll be spaced out over, over several days rather than everything happening at once. Sorry, 60 to 70 total. Total, yes ma'am. Yeah, and um, just so you can understand how that's phased um, in terms of building um, the access road. So you'd have gravel trucks coming in about for about a week. Um, so you're looking at maybe eight to 10 trucks per day. So nothing that would really impact, um, you know, normal traffic, traffic flows on set right road. And then the remainder of the trucks, um, about 20 truckloads will be delivering materials in phases over the three to six month um, build period. So not, not a lot of traffic at all. Three to six months? Three to six months? Yes, three to six months. But the access road, you're gonna upgrade it? Yes, sir. Yes. That will be the majority of the truckloads will be gravel from the local quarry to upgrade the, the roadway. To, uh, to allow you know, consistent access to it. Another thing that did come up was the reflection, uh, reflective nature of the panels. Um, we provided a, a report um, that shows it's, it's less than 2% of, of sunlight that hits them on, on the panels. The, the goal here is not to reflect light, that's lost energy. Uh, the goal is to absorb them, absorb as much as they can. As they, can. they have an anti-reflective coating placed on them and stippled glass to, to defray the, uh, the reflection. Uh, I think one of the most telling pieces of that is that airports around the country have these installed right around them to, uh, to uh, they're not blinding pilots landing, landing planes. So, but we did provide a formal statement on that as well. And thank you for hearing us tonight. Uh, with that, I think I'd like to let Kevin well, talk. Oh, just quickly, sorry. we talked about, um, this was proposed on two lots. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. What about the A and R? We did submit again? an A and R um, to you guys last Monday. And so that's what this is. Uh, uh, to to just seek to dissolve the the two lots into one, and you should have the application yeah. for that. Good. Thank you. Yep. And if no immediate questions, I'll let Kevin talk about the stormwater, but happy to take some initial questions now. No, keep going. Yes. Pretty, pretty brief. Um, there's a, a full write up in there now uh, to document uh, existing and proposed conditions um, for the site. You want to take the microphone? And, um, and as we had talked a little bit about before, um, the, the stormwater management system really is the, the ground cover that's going to be implemented on the site after it's, it's constructed, um, and the, the deep root system of that vegetation. Um, and we, we would expect that some of the concerns that were raised about uh, off-site drainage that runs through there would probably be improved with a more cohesive ground cover that, that's there all year. Uh, as opposed to an, an ag crop. So. so I'm just just looking. You'd say what specifically the vegetation is you're putting down? It's in it's in the plant set on sheet three. Yeah, towards the back of the plant set, there's a seed list. This 
So it's in the storm order or it's in the uh, I will tell you just previous. a second. Man. Yes, Scott had it. Sheet, um, sheet 3.0. The bottom right corner of sheet 3.0. And then to go along with the, the planting discussion, we, yeah. as Scott said, we did do a sight line analysis and we've added uh, screening to the west side of the project outside the fence line. Which consists of uh, east, eastern red cedars and western red cedars that would be planted at a height of 46 feet in very maturity. And that's documented on sheet 3.0 as well. 3.0 as well? Yes, ma'am. How tall will those trees get? 15 to 20 feet. Yeah, in mature. Yeah. Set back and not to not pass the shade on the project, but you need to provide that screen effectively for the whole site. I know some concern on how high it is. Yeah. Okay. So great at 15 to 20 feet. That's the first time I've heard of this grass, like the ground cover, so you can absorb more water. And I'm surprised nobody else has used that in their projects. I, I think it's being fairly widely used at this point. Um, I know a few projects in New York that have gotten some publicity about it. And pretty much every job we work on here in Massachusetts, that's what we're calling for. Um, so what makes this different from any other grass? Uh, well, if you take like a turf lawn, for example, that, and that, that's really only going to have a root structure that goes in a few inches. Uh, and this stuff, after it sets up for a few years, will be down several feet. And that, so what does the water fall the root system down? Or? Yeah. Yeah, the plants use most of it, and then what, what they don't use just soaks down into the deep, you know, the, the, the deep pores that it's making. So can you, um, why don't you just show us, everybody, actually on TV and in the audience, where you're planting the trees? Where the screen is? Yeah, the screen. It's basically along the whole west side. So just give us, show us where the set right road is, I guess. two parcels until they're officially combined there on the, on the locus. Yep. Um, so then the project starts in this area here. So there's that property line. And then we're proposing screening all down this west side outside of the chain link fence. And the north and south side, there's nothing going on there, so there's no one. We hadn't proposed anything because mm -hmm. we don't think there's a concern for visual issues there, yeah. as far as, you know, this is all ag land to the north, and then it turns into trees at the south. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just isn't neighbors there, are, there. there are neighbors along that uh, plain road, no? Well, the north side, pretty, pretty far away. Road, mm -hmm. uh, west. I think it's going to affect them. But their view site also. Yeah. I don't know if they, you know, I don't know. It's, it's pretty far. It is a long way. Yeah. On, on 116 we're talking about? No, no. The, uh, the north, the road on the north side. They keep going. Yeah. Oh, north. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's up a little ways. There should be some natural topographical screen there as yeah. well. Far, but. And uh, it may also be worth noting that with the cover crop of about one and a half feet in the ground, sorry, the cover crop of about uh, one and a half feet on, in the ground, which most of the year there will be a crop, um, the topography does screen, if not the entirety, almost the entirety of the project from standing on set right road. It, it cannot be seen. We, we took a video to, to confirm it and, and see it stood out there with my hand up in the field waving. When you say cover crop, cover crop that's on your prop, on this property that you're, or other people's property? On, on the, the piece of property between the, uh, the project. So Mr. Bowman lives not here. He lives in New York, but he owns a property between Set Right Road and Mr. Ostrowski's property. Yeah. And it's, it's farmed agriculturally. And when there's a crop in the ground, it, it grows, you know, about a couple of feet high. And that with an existing natural berm does provide a significant amount of screening as well. 
that, that's not you know something to bank on, but it's it no, that's is the natural saying. condition as it is right now. A lot of different cover crops. Yeah. And the uh, another emergency vehicle. So you're gonna you're gonna upgrade this road so mm -hmm. fire trucks could come in there. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, we, we did speak with the Department of Public Works, Kevin Scarborough, and he said he had no problem uh, keeping the, the portion of Satright Road to the access road clear throughout the year. Um, I, I spoke with him last week, and he, he said he was happy to, happy to do that. And then we will, as part of our operations... Can say that again? So who is, who is Kevin that? Scarborough, oh, okay. the superintendent yeah. at DPW. Yeah. Um, he said he, he saw no problem maintaining that as a, a public way to keep access there. And then as part of our standard operations and maintenance plan um, for the, the project, we'll keep the site access open uh, as necessary to, to be able to access it throughout the year. It'll, it'll be, a, it's quiet. Um, so that was another question that had come up is, is noise level. Um, it, it will be below 60, all of the pieces are below 60 decibels and standing one meter outside of the fence line will be no, no longer than um, standard ambient. Standard ambient noise. Noise. I actually, actually have a letter, we, we requested comments from all the public officials and departments and I do have one from Director of Public Works, I have reviewed the plan. DPW should be notified of ro roadway upgrades. Uh, driveway permit is required. Um, any differences on hydrology, DPW should be notified. I think that's all I have at this point. All right, um, all right, I guess, is that good? The select board also, we, we attended a meeting where they provided comment on this as well, and I, I don't know if they sent a note yet or not to you guys, but. Do you have another folder for this, or? Yeah, I don't think we did. They, they referenced the, the height. And that would be in there. I know, that was the only one that was in here. I don't think, no, I don't think we have it yet. Okay. Let's set it up. 21st, 22nd? Uh, it was 22nd. 22nd, yeah. And this is all butters. Oh, blah, 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 blah. God. Um, um, from the police chief, no issues. Okay. <laughs> File that. All right, I'd like to, uh, this is but a... Nothing from... Any other okay. quick questions here, or we'll open it up to the public? Oh, yeah, we, we can show the sightline analysis really quickly. Uh, actually, yeah, and I saw that that's in here. Um, it's the last sheet. The last sheet. Oh, wait, no, it's, it's the third to last sheet, yeah, actually. Yeah, sheet, sheet five. Because the last two are the A and R sheets. It's a pretty long stretch, so it's kind of hard to see what's happening on the topo level there. But on, on the far left side is, are the houses along Set Right Road. Um, and then there's a sight line drawn straight across, showing from a six-foot individual where uh, one would stand. And then the, the tree buffer screening is, is shown. Um, it blocks the view of the panels. They will eventually grow to block the entirety of the, even the rear side at about uh, 14 feet when they hit a height of 14 feet the entire uh, length will be completely screened. So I, so behind them, um, then behind all the panels is, is more woods, more, woods. more trees. Yes sir. yes, sir. Would the, the screening trees you have there, would they get up to that height? The height of the, the rear trees in yeah. the back? No, those, those trees are 70 to 80 foot tall. Okay. These, these will grow probably about 20 feet tall. Because then I remember there was a question about then it's the view because then you get hills and mountains beyond that. So these screening trees wouldn't block no. that view no. either. No, no, no. Uh -uh. no. It's kind of a, a perfect height, actually. All right. Um, so I'd like to open this up to uh, public comment and questions. And we have a, um, I've been told that this mic up here is on. 
and we do appreciate it if people would come up, state their name, um, and talk into the mic, not just for tonight's, for the audience, but also, like I say, it's on TV, too. So um, do we have a sign up? Is the one going around? Um, all right, so I think people can just come up and talk. It won't get out of control, hopefully. Anybody like to come up? Good, thanks. Good evening, I'm David Decision. I'm a resident of 33 Set Right Road, and, and uh, I appreciate the, uh, the members of the, uh, the company coming up with some of the answers, but um, as usual, there's lies, damn lies, and then solar panel uh, uh, farm uh, proposals, and this line of sight is, it, it couldn't be more misleading to the ground truth. Um, the line of sight may be from six feet from somebody standing on Set Right Road, but myself and my neighbors, we don't live at six feet. We have a couple of steps that go into the house. Our homes are built up. We have large picture windows that have a line of sight that's much higher than six feet. The four last homes on that street are two-story homes, so we have that line of sight from our bedrooms that are between 18 and 20 feet. Uh, so th this is a little disingenuous to come in here and say that a person walking down the road may not see or be in the line of sight. That, that is absolutely correct, but it's disingenuous to the people who live there. That line of sight is much different than the six feet height. Uh, and to shoot that line and say, oh, we've got it covered, is misleading to this board. Because those houses are not built at the six foot level that these folks are talking about. And so you need, you need to understand and not be fooled uh, by, by, that, uh, uh, by that, that uh, study and that proposal. There are four two-story homes that abut this property. And just this to be, line of sight is okay, not. Just to be clear, they told us that at six feet. At six feet, that's walking all they set right road. Right. right. But, I wanna, but I want you to know that you have to, and I'm, I'm taking you to the next step. The next right. step is what they didn't that, tell but, you but, is. But, but what they said I don't, is true, I think. Is it? I, You're I, not arguing I, that. I'm not arguing with the fact that from the okay. line of sight at okay. six feet. What I'm saying okay. is we don't live at six feet. We right. live above that. Okay. But they just said about the six feet. Right. So being but disingenuous, I'm not sure. They just said. Six feet. Oh. It is self-serving, Mr. Waite. It's self-serving. No, you're, now you're telling us yes. that from 15 feet is different. Right. That's what we it's, want to hear. Their, their pr presentation That's is completely self-serving and ignores the realities of the people who live on that street. That's why we have public hearings. Thank you. Um, and I also didn't hear uh, the question. I didn't hear the, when they talked about the vegetation, I heard just 15-foot trees. I didn't hear what type of trees they are and, and what, how big they'll be when they are um, initially planted. I, I mentioned it. it there, eastern. I, I, I couldn't hear you because it was oh, sorry. Hard to hear. Uh, eastern red cedars and western red cedars. They'll yep. be planted four to six feet, and then they'll grow from there. You have four to six feet apart. No, 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 no. Four high. to six feet high. Four to six feet high. So you have a four to six feet proposal for a, a, a visual site buffer that is going to cover something that's eight feet. So if, I don't know what the great growth rate of these this barrier is, but we're looking at a few years before we even achieve uh, a a even line of sight blocking out and becoming a barrier to this. Uh, so that's not, uh, that's not, that is going to uh, have an immediate impact on our line of sight uh, and uh, in the character and nature of the neighborhood. Um, so I, I don't think that, uh, uh, well, uh, but thank you. Um, also too, um, the, the land that is uh, across the street to the west of Set Right Road that is undeveloped, it is currently used as agricultural uh, land, but that's because the owner has decided to use it as agricultural land. Those are at least three or if not four buildable lots that have residential potential. Um, so it's not just simply agriculture. They're not under 61A. They're not protected in any way, shape, or form. Those are buildable housing lots that, are, that have the necessary frontage, that they have been perked, and they can be built on. So it's, it, it, to, to characterize that a lot is simply an agricultural lot is also a little bit uh, misleading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm Sheraton. <laughs> yeah, I sorry. think I need you to sign in. Are you on this? I didn't sign in. Uh, 
uh, Tony Martino, 39 Set Right Road. Um, just to expand on what Mr. Decision said about the sight lines um, standing in the middle of Set Right Road this evening on the way out, you, you can see every inch of that field all the way down to the trees. Um, so I'm not sure where these sight lines came from, um, but from the road, um, and it's, uh, I don't know if you have measurements there, but it, it's quite a drop. It's got to be at least uh, probably a 15 to 20 foot drop from Set Right Road down to where these are going to be built. And I'm no engineer, but if they're, I'm not sure if they're bringing in Phil to build these, or we're just going to, I don't know, we're going to put them in the ground right at ground level where they're at right now. Um, you're going to have a six, six foot tree that's going to grow up to 15 feet, which is going to put you at the level with set right road. So they're going to block the first few rows of solar panels, yes. But you're going to be able to see over those and see all the way down, is my understanding. Again, I'm no engineer, but just from what they show there, the, um, the level of the road is, is at the height of the solar panels. Um, and, and you can see that nine months a year all the way down. Um, not to mention um, the people that live on Sawmill Plain Road, who well, you'll probably be hearing from, as well as the people who live on Boyden or uh, Plain Road, Plain Road West, um, who are significantly higher, and will be able to see the entire project with a with a tree that even grows to 15 feet year, 15 feet tall over time. Um, that's uh, one of my questions or comments, I guess. Um, and I, I just don't understand the, so this is 60 to 70 truck trips, including everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many solar panels is it? Uh, it's about 7,000. How many you fit on a truck? <laughs> uh, quite a few. Quite a few? Yeah. yeah, that was drawn from our manufacturer's okay. specs that they, they gave us. It just seems like a huge number on <laughs> A small number of trucks. They're, they're pretty thin, you know, they're about that thick. Okay. They stack pretty high. Um, so that, that's, that's the screening buffer, which is not going to screen. Um, you're going to be able to see, especially the back of that solar farm and facility. It, it's not a farm, it's, it's a facility. It's an industrial facility, industrial panels in the middle of farm fields, uh, which have been farmed in Deerfield for not even sure how many years, but numerous years. Yeah. Um, and there's not much farm field left. When I bought my house, I didn't buy my house because it was a nice house. I bought my house because of the location. And then I upgraded my house afterwards. But it's the location that people buy. As they say, location, location, location it will affect home prices. It's a market, so it's whatever somebody's willing to pay you for your location. If your location is staring at a solar facility, it's gonna be less. And this is one parcel of land in a huge area of, of farm fields. I'm not even sure how many hundreds of acres. Um, other than the North Meadows, it's the largest area of farmland in Deerfield. Um, Mr. David touched on it earlier at the earlier meeting. It's a slippery slope because we're going to start by one parcel. And I get it, it's, it's 10 acres, not a heck of a lot of land. But then you have another parcel. And can you put 10 acres of solar panels on that parcel? And then you get a ne next parcel. Well, you just put it on one, so you got to put it on this one. And pretty soon you don't have any farmland. All you have is a solar, an enormous solar facility in that area. And that's frightening. And not just because I live there, but 
it's just, it's sad that we're not looking forward over the long term. And when I say long term, like in the next hundred years, are we going to fill everything with things that we make? Or are we going to leave some land preserved? And this is a huge area of farmland. And you guys have an awesome responsibility. And I don't envy you one bit. But it frightens me as to how far this is going to go. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? Uh, Peter Coffin, 25 Set Right Road. And I'm probably going to be the one most affected by the sight line because my house is right on the corner and it slopes away from Set Right Road. So I have the southernmost view from there. And just to recap what Tony said. I mean, we've been in our house for 25 years, and about 15, 18 years ago, we made a significant investment because of the neighborhood, because of the views, everything. And now, yeah, you know, it's going to be years before those trees, which don't fit in with the other trees in the neighborhood, are able to cover anything. And I'm probably still going to be able to see the back of those panels from. Uh, from my yard, so I'd hate to see perfectly good farmland be taken out of production, like Tony said. Yeah, farmland is dwindling. We all need food. So, you know, and if that's the second largest parcel of farmland in town, I'd be ashamed to see that, you know, taken out of production, you know, for the good of humanity. So I just wanted to state that you know, I agree with my neighbors in that, you know, it's going to affect the view. It's going to affect, you know, the value of our homes. And it's just not a good place for a project like this. Thank you. Thanks. So um, just had a few follow-up questions. Um, one of the big things last time was the wires. I think we talked about being, were they going to be above ground, below ground? I heard some mention of it, I think, earlier, but it wasn't clear to me exactly what was said. Do we have written agreement that these are going to be buried lines? We had changed the plans to have them run underground across the uh, across the agricultural field and then along the the uh, eastern part jutting out from set right above ground but but we can we can bury them and agree to bury the whole thing and make sure they're, they're all buried at the last meeting i thought yeah. we had asked for the revised plans right. they have buried okay yeah we'll we'll so. make a quick change so that they're completely buried so the revised plans do not have that yet but they will it exactly. has the main portion of it buried but we'll make sure that it has the whole the whole section buried so my house at 31 set right will not have wires no Except where, except where they exist above ground already. They don't exist. They're, down, they they're down on the, coming up the street, but they don't exist. That's There's crazy. a single pole at the end yep. of set, right? That's, that's the only place there will be a pole. We won't add more poles. So we'll just have the wires come out of the ground and, and connect them. Okay. Okay. They'll connect yeah. to the pole. All right. Um, and then I think in the other meeting also we asked for pictures uh, mm -hmm. to clarify what mm -hmm. the panels would look like. We provided those in this report. Which it's in here. It's on page four. Page four. Yeah. We have a couple extra reports if we yeah. want to. We can pass them around because um, there are <coughs> public record. Bunch of so, bunch of pictures in there that are helpful. And then on page seven, there's a. Well, we won't be using those lines of background anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, 
So then my other question, I guess, is still around the access road. Uh, and then there was a conversation, I think, with a superintendent uh, regarding access to that. So just to clarify, the town is assuming now that they're going to plow from the end of paved set right road throughout to this access road? Is that? Because that's a, that is a rutted dirt road that would be really interesting to plow. Uh, he, he did agree to do that, but on the condition that, that we upgrade uh, the, the road to make it accessible and, and easy to, to get on and remove the ruts. That's what as the far as your section, as far as your access road? Not so not, not our, so once the set right road runs north um, and our access road would jut right. off. And that's um, where you would stop. Exactly, it. so we would be responsible for, for, um, our, access for our access road. But and since that's what right. um, Kevin's calling the driveway? When he says you need a driveway permit, that's... That yeah. would be the driveway. It's like a farm road right now, but that would be the driveway. Yeah. yeah. No, the driveway uh, is the access road. So the road north south is the public right, road. Right, right. That's set right, right road. Now, yeah. set right now, set right road. Don't tell my husband, but I drove on it, and I'm very sorry that I. <laughs> right, um, right. <laughs> not, not he won't find out. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Annie. But anyway, so, so the that's right the one. Turn off of that is yes, the, that's the driveway that you yeah. that right. we'll need. Right, and, and we'll reinforce the, the section between the driveway and the paved portion of, of Set Right Road to make it accessible and easily uh, accessed to, to clean and clear. Yeah, we're not asking for our access road to right. be paved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just that's, just that will where, where did you, the last meeting you said that usually the town used to stop plowing there and then just Yeah, the, snow the bank? town stops at the paved end of Set Right Road. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then between... Plain road and uh, set right is nothing but rutted farm roads. Yeah, but so it's a public access. It's actually. public access, right? But but I just want to make sure we're yeah. thinking about what we yeah. have to do to get to this access yeah. road. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I, I did specifically talk about that with the superintendent at the DPW, and mm -hmm. he had no no problem with it. So you paved that portion of uh, set right road that goes off to your driveway or access road, or is that just going to be gravel? The plan was to gravel it, reinforce it and gravel it. So you'll gravel it once. Who's going to maintain that? The town will then have to maintain that road? That is, that's a concern. I, I suppose, since it's a public access yeah. road. But they don't know. Nope. No. So I, I, don't think the, I don't see why the town would change doing more than it does now. So that's, how's, that's, how's he going to access it? Well, that's their, that's kind of their problem more than the well, towns. I yeah, we, I mean, we, so part of our operations and maintenance plan, we contract locally for that. And so to the extent there needs to be upgrades made, uh -huh. if site access becomes an issue, that's, you know, that's all part of that contract. Uh -huh. Yeah. We just want to make sure emergency vehicles can get in there. So yes, that's yeah. up. That's for sure. What yeah. You have to do what you have to do. To yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So in order to maintain the upgrade, upgrade, that's going to be part of your pro, your plan, I would think. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. That's something mm -hmm. we got to yeah. So will that be consider. part of a revised plan, or how, is, how does that get I, I think it's written into the operations and maintenance plan in the current application. Is that, that should be in your erosion control and site clearing. I mean, that's part of the, the whole construction process, right? Yeah, we show the, the length that... We're proposing to improve on that. Nope. You got that. I think it's on cheap one. Yep. All right. That's right. Perfect. So this yep. is where it ends, yep, and yep, then you're yep, going to yep, add yep, in yep, and then yep. I'll do that. They got six inch gravel added to existing dirt road, gravel access road, 10 inch minimum from property line. So how many feet from like the edge of pavement, existing pavement to your access road, how many feet is that yeah. in front of the plate? Let's see. We've got some numbers, is that 413? Yeah. Yeah.
Also, uh, page two here has the point of interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is the part that we're we're looking on too. Okay. Um, and the poll at the end of set right, we're, mm -hmm. that's still showing. Yeah, and we'll we'll change that to show that that's okay. all buried. Okay. The whole thing up so to that poll on set right. That's going to be buried. All right. Good point. So all right. So. Uh, so just bringing up again the sight lines, um, you know, concerned about these these trees being four feet, six feet against an eight foot panel. How long is it going to take before our our quality of of life is restored? Um, you know, we're putting these things in, and it, it's going to be a long time before those trees get up and, and block it. So I'm just going to you know, as, as far as a community project, and is there a value for the community, and is it a good you know, positive experience for the community. We have a we have a sight line that's a concern. We have power lines that were supposed to be buried in a revised project. They're not buried yet, uh, and we have this access row that it seems like the town is going to assume some sort of liability accessing to. So not the access road itself, but we're going to be taking on some sort of liability for this road eventually. Right? It's not a road that we have any root reason for. So just in totality, there's a lot of reasons here that this does not add up to a, a quality community project uh, that's adding value rather than taking away. So. Thank you. As long as I know your name, that will help. James Wiggins, Solomon Thank you. Save you a few steps. <laughs> oh, good. So as somebody who just found out about this literally hour plus ago, could you explain to me what an abutter constitutes? Mm. Shared property line. So are we talking 300 feet or? 300. 300 feet. Yeah. So okay. we've talked about, somebody who's just come in, you've talked about line of sight. And you're really harping on line of sight. If I just opened this book and I only had a couple minutes to look at, if you look at page five, we moved to this community a couple of years ago because it's a wonderful community. The sense of camaraderie is amazing. Every time we have visitors that come from out of states, first thing we do is bring them to Sugarloaf and look down off of Sugarloaf and you enjoy the valley. You see the valley. It's in all these commercials for all these banks. You look at page five. Which Does that look appealing to you in the book? I'm not sure if that's, there's a lot of different photos in here. We have Summers. to make sure. Yeah, this is a different, Summers. it's not. Where it says impact on property values. Okay, but that's not the project that they're designing. I just but that's an example that they're providing us with, correct? It's a much larger project than what we're it talking is. about. It yeah, is. So I look at that line of sight that you have over there. Granted, I may not be close enough to be impacted, but every morning when I get up, I'm not at six feet. I'm probably 40 feet or above. Looking out our back deck, we have a beautiful view of Mount Toby and Mount Sugarloaf. We love it. And I can see those fields. There's black walnuts down there. There's a barn down there. I can see them. It changes throughout the year. I don't want to look at this. I'm just telling you, honestly, I don't know the proper terminology, the verbiage, but that's disgusting. My house has a beautiful view. We're lucky to be here. This is going to drastically change the value of the property where I live. My neighbor, who's an elderly lady who contributed to this community for years, her name is Betty Barker. They raised money out of their own pockets to buy the land behind our house to keep it for farms only. She was in, upset to the point of tears today when she found out that this was going to go in there. It's not farming. You're harnessing energy from the sun. Farming is providing food that benefits families every day. And then the other question I have is, could you explain to me how this is helpful for you, your words? For bees, for a good environment. Sure. 
uh, I, I'd be happy to respond yeah. to that. Is I that okay? Sit, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned pollinated, uh, you know, pollinators, so you might yeah, as well and, explain and that. We attached a, a study on this. Um, you know, it's been mentioned how, how much farmland is here, and I love that respect that this is not a permanent project that's going to stay there. It's a 20 year lifespan for what it's worth, and a bond is posted to remove the panel so that this is not a, a permanent change of of the region. But as far as the bees go, you have about 400 acres of agricultural land currently, uh, a little more than 400 acres of agricultural land within a mile of this 10 acre project that we're talking about. Um, a study has been conducted uh, looking at pollinator mixes. And Daniel, you might actually speak Yeah, speak so this study this. was conducted by NREL and the Argonne Laboratory, both funded by the Department of Energy um, and released in 2018. And it just speaks to the benefit of using a pollinator mix um, with a solar um, array. And so basically the um, it, it fosters uh, obviously pollinator activity that can benefit um, agricultural land that's within a mile radius of the, um, of the array and also um, help to rejuvenate native um, bee colonies as well. It's effectively a, a wildflower mix that, that provides a lot of pollen for bees to, to live in and, and um, buzz around and collect pollen and go back to their hive and then also go around to the surrounding areas and, and impact the crops and the, the um, things in that region. So it's, if you'd walk by it, it would look like a, a field of wildflowers with some arrays up above it and a bunch of bees buzzing around underneath it. That's what we mean by pollinator mix. Um, and, and we don't have to mow it throughout the year. We'll mow it once at the end of the year. Um, so there won't be noise from mowing happening either. All right, thanks. Is that good? No, not really. Um, have you guys gone up the street to see the apiary that's been there for many years that has multiple millions of bees? No, I haven't. That's cool, though. Yeah, it is. But how can bees feed when you cover their soil with glass? So you're going to cover up 10 acres of farmland that's pollinated by the bees in this area that they make their livelihood also transporting bees to pollinate squash props, uh, corn. If you bring the, the vegetation in, is totally available to them. It's not covered. Oh, really? Because from yeah. the pictures, to me, it looks like it's covered. Uh, on the plan, you'll see there's 15 feet between uh, panels. The panels are at a maximum of six feet um, tall, and then there's about a 15-foot space between each row. So my only concern is the plan we saw for Cumberland Farms is completely different than what we got right now as far as the approach and how the land was going to be handled. And then the other thing is it's 10 acres or larger, constitutes a large complex, but if we're only 9.85, I get that. But what if we go to another 9.85? and then another 9.85, and now I become an abutter as well. To me, it doesn't make sense for the town to allow this to go in. As somebody who's new to the area, but also hunted that area for the last 20 years, I'm familiar with the land, I'm familiar with the environment, and now you want to fence off 12 acres of land that just doesn't make any sense to me. And I get it if you're here and you make money and you have your studies that are good in Virginia and they're good in all these other states and counties, but you, didn't, you don't live in this community. Your children don't go to school here, and you don't plan to retire here and stay here. You know, I, unfortunately, I only had an hour to look at this, and what I saw right here makes me disgusted to see it. And I just hope and pray that you take your time to really look at this and evaluate it. Sorry, I wish I had more time and was aware, because I would have prepared more for you. Thank you. Thank you. In, the, um, in this packet, are there, are there any photos that look like what you're, you're proposing? Because most of these are not, they're 10 megawatts and they're this and that. So I'm, I'm not sure you did yourself um, a favor here. There's but a 2.2 no. megawatt on page four and then on with, page- With a grass between it and things? No, that doesn't, that doesn't have a full rendering of it. We, we, we didn't have a full photo of this one. We're, we're, this is one we're putting up in here and we don't have a full photo of that, but I can, I can find one, uh, try to find a, a smaller one. By providing the, the five megawatt, you know, we were, we were wanting to show just sort of how the, the panels were laid out and arrayed. Which um, was, that, was that one? That? That's on page five. Uh, that's the Summers, Connecticut project. Oh. Um, so it's, it's larger than what this will actually look like, right. significantly larger. But I think a lot of, a lot of us have that question, what, what will it look like with the high grasses and with the, you know, the hedge around it? Um, be nice to know. The, the question came up about how long these... Uh, Trees around the fence, if they start out at four feet, how long till they get to be eight or ten or fourteen feet? 
to grow about 12 to 18 inches a year. 12 inches a 12, year? 12 to 18 12 inches, yeah. Inches yeah. From so. four feet to eight four, feet is four years. Four to six feet is the height that they'll be installed. So that's the, the range that the nursery gave us in terms of available um, sizes. So they'll be four to six feet. And then, yeah, so it would be probably about five years until they're um, 12, 14 feet tall. Wow. But again, I mean, it's it, it installed, they'll um, almost fully cover the fence. And, um, you know, from there, it's just the back of the array that will be exposed. And that's, I mean, the back of the array is approximately half a mile from Setright Road. Is anybody um, here from the owner of the property? Is, is anybody like to talk about? I, I just feel like this is, this comes up a lot about farmland becoming solar, and um, as as we mentioned, some farmland can become houses, and some farmland becomes other things. Um, and if this is not an APR or a land trust, you know, it's it's all risky. Because um, I think that's one thing, certainly in Deerfield, we all appreciate is the uh, farmland. But I've, I've been hearing from a lot of farmers who are having a hard time making ends meet with just farming. So uh, I just invite that. But yeah. And uh, on on that note, the one, the one thing, and I don't mean to in any way provoke provoke an argument, but if if those are four buildable lots across from Set Right Road, that that would be a visual screen against this. Uh, the, the backdrop automatically. So this is in some ways a way to secure against that if people would not want to build there. This would be a very quiet neighbor that would not increase any traffic. Um, but if houses are built across the, the way on Set Right Road, that's a, that's a visual impact on that at Vista already as well. And I'm happy to talk a little bit about the real estate value analysis too, if that's, you know. You know, I, I see you included that, yeah. I, I, and I'm sure I'm sure if you read it, it makes sense, but someone else might come up with another thing too. Um, but I appreciate, because we did ask for that, so I appreciate you putting that in there. Um. I'd, I'd like to just make a follow-up comment on your, your statement about farming and the financial situation there. Um, what we've seen on several of these that have been done on ag land <clears throat> is this is where the landowner can divert a portion of their property into something that produces a reliable income for a certain period. Uh, and then that allows them to hold the rest of their land and keep that in farming and, and basically keep the whole thing going. Um, and many of them have said that without that, it's probably just a matter of time before they're out. So. It, it was mentioned by the landowner who's here, but didn't, didn't desire to speak right now in front of everybody. Um, that one option that he has considered that this would preclude him from doing is, is selling the rest of it for, for development otherwise. Um, you know, we're, we're talking here about a 10-acre uh, portion of a 50-acre set of parcels that is quite small, quite quiet, one truck a month to main, maintain it and make sure it works um, as compared to any other form of, of development on it that could, could produce significantly more noise and hassle. And we've, we've designed it in, you know, in, in line with the bylaws. It would be classified as a large-scale ground-mounted solar project, which is within the confines of residential agricultural property. Um, so we, we're not seeking a variance to do something that the town has not somewhat indicated a, an interest in having done mm -hmm. um, on these. So, so that's, you know, that's one of the first things we look at when we try to cite these projects in the state as places that are allowable by, by a special permit, which this, this does fit within how the bylaw has been written. Yeah. Um, based on, as I understand, the Energy Committee work to, to try to foster that, and we're not building an extra large scale. This is, this is what's allowed within this area. All right. All right, anybody else? Yeah, we, have, we have a new one, and then you can come back with yeah. And I, um, I don't live on Seth Wright. I don't border any of this. I just found, about, found out about this today. 
Um, I grew up in South Deerfield and I left about 40 years ago and I've been looking for property in this area. And most recently, about three months ago, I purchased a home on Plain Road, which is a good distance away from where this project is going to be. And I don't know about engineering. I just heard about these plans today. Um, what I do understand, though, is, is what it's like to grow up in a community that um, takes aesthetics into consideration. Um, and the views that I have in this home that I just purchased, along with many other people, I think almost 180 degrees circumference, half a circumference around where this is going to be built are kind of sloped up. And one of the things that drew me to this house was being able to look outdoors in the front, the back, the side, and see plains and fields and corn and potatoes and Sugarloaf Mountain and wonderful mountains all around. And my view, um, would be incredibly disrupted, and I'm a good distance away. Um, and I can honestly say if I knew this project was coming along three months ago, I, I wouldn't have bought the home that I bought, because clearly it's gonna devalue the homes around there, and what it's gonna do to the, the views, to the surrounding area, and I, I, I'm, it's just devastating to me. Um, and I, Again, I like I said, I just bought this home, and um, and I was looking for something just like it in the country where I could enjoy retiring and have a view and have my grandkids over and have people come over and go sledding and enjoy this great community and the wonderful neighbors I've met. And I suspect that a number of the neighbors that I live around aren't aware of this either because this project is going to affect Leroy, Lee Road, Sawmill Plain. It's going to affect a, a lot of people and homes. And had I known about it, like I said, sooner, um, not sure what I would have done, but I, I would hope that there's a lot of consideration that goes into the what, what the community is about and, um, and how particularly important it is to try and maintain um, the country and, and, and the beauty of it. And that's kind of all I have to say, so thank you. Thank you. Thanks. David Kemp. Again, David, Decision 33 Set Right Road. Um, again, there's been a lot of work done in the presentation of this package uh, to the board and the application of this special permit. And, I, and I, we get sometimes lost in the details uh, and the specifics that are, we're concerned if this project goes in. But there's still a process. That needs, to be about, that needs to be undertaken, and that's this special permit process which requires you as the board. And I know you know what you're, what you're doing. I know you know the law, but I still think it's important to reiterate that you have to make a finding that this project, as proposed by this company, uh, that the benefits outweigh the detriments to the community and the neighborhood. And you've listed specifically, the town has passed and charged you with adhering to the review criteria that's in the bylaws. And that includes the social and economic and community needs. And I mentioned this last time, and I want to reiterate it again because I, I, I've heard the same mantra that I heard before, that we have the generic statement that there's going to be 300 homes serviced by this over time. There's no direct impact to this community. There's no urgent need for this type of uh, energy generation in this community. What they have provided you in their application is simply solar speak a blanket statement uh, that does not take into account any of the particulars of our community and in particular my neighborhood. And you've heard very passionately from some of the folks that are much farther removed than I am from this about the impact that it has on their quality of life and their uh, commitment to the, 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 the town uh, and the community. So that's one of the factors that I think this application is woefully inadequate when it uh, deals with uh, Section 5321, is that they have not demonstrated to you that the burden of this project is outweighed by the benefit. We also have for you to consider the adequacy of public services. And tonight you, we, we did get some information from the DPW that said that they could plow this. But you also mentioned that, oh, they're going to improve this road. 
But if you look at the extension, that 400 feet of extension between the end of the pavement at Sedright Road, where it ends now, and their access road to this proposed facility, what you'll see when you drive on that particular piece of, uh, of road is a road that it, it almost immediately slopes off to the west from four to six to eight feet down. It's a bank. And on the uh, west side, it's a bank up four or five feet. To widen that road, uh, to do anything to improve it other than the one car path road that it is now is going to require, I'm assuming, uh, something more than just simply putting down eight to 10 inches of gravel if they truly want to make it uh, passable and serviceable uh, for, for anything more than it is right now, which is simply a farm road. And the uh, superintendent of the Department of Public Works didn't talk to any, or didn't present you with any information about the cost. And one of the things you have to weigh as part of this project is the cost to the town. There's been no cost, but certainly no cost figures, but certainly there is a cost, the wear and tear on the, uh, the equipment, the cost of salaries to do that further, uh, how are they going to turn around, uh, and, uh, and so there, there is, a, there is an, an aspect to this regarding cost that, uh, that hasn't been met in, uh, in Section 5323. The public services may be adequate, but they're borderline. Finally, and most importantly, the, uh, the neighborhood character and the, uh, the social structures. And I think this is where uh, we really have a problem. Um, this, uh, this development, this proposal is completely out of character uh, for the neighborhood. Um, it, uh, it has been, as, as my neighbors have test, as it, it's spoken, it has been not for, I don't know how long, but for centuries, uh, this has been farm and agricultural wide open space. Um, it has been uh, residential, and uh, the, it, and it's not just that, um, uh, that we have the change in the character of the land, but you also, and you are, you are authorized to do so, you're, you're, you're actually allowed to consider not just what the current use of the land is, but what the future uses of this land may be and the benefit to the town. And certainly with four building lots there, uh, you, have, you can consider that as well, and the impact it would have on those, the sale of those lots, and the impact it would have on the value of those lots, and the benefit to the town. Um, and finally, um, we, we heard about the proposed fiscal impact on the town, and, and uh, it's a great figure to hear, as, as certainly as uh, members of a, of a town board, you love to hear the increase in the, in, in the bottom line, and, and what, what is this going to be for the town coffers? And you hear this, this wonderful figure of, of $500,000. It's $25,000 over the course of a 20-year lifespan, and there's no factor for inflation in that. That's peanuts. Peanuts because of what they're proposing to do to this land, this agricultural land. Uh, it, it's, it, it is, uh, um, the, the project as it is, the $25,000 does not make up for uh, what the, the scarring that's going to occur on our, our agricultural land uh, and the fact that these solar panels will constitute a blight on the visual um, character of our community. Um, it's just not worth the cost. You know, we, we, uh, we also heard, uh, and we, we also heard, I think the last testimony was that these are going to be payment in lieu of taxes, which is nothing more than a gift. There's no guarantee. So I don't know if that's been solidified or not. We had some in, in, innuendo tonight that maybe there was going to be some tax benefit, but last, week, last month we heard payment in lieu or in-kind appropriations. That's no guarantee that that's going to continue. So the special permitting process needs to stand for something more than the parties just putting together an application that looks pretty on the outside, has a catchy phrase name that, that pulls on the heartstrings of the folks that, that grew up here and, 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 uh, and uses the word frontier in it. It needs to be something more than just a pro forma uh, application that uh, complies with the minimum requirements of the bylaws. And I don't think this application has done so. They, they have done a lot of the specific legwork. They've done some nice studies. They provided you with a lot of detailed information. But they have failed on the overall uh, presentation when it comes to the requirements that you are required to consider, consider to weigh the, be the benefit versus the detriment. And um, you have a lot of discretion. And uh, the, you know, special permit is not something that is a right to anybody. And you have a lot of discretion. And, and that discretion 
is something that you should exercise, even if you can do it. Even if this project fits within the parameters, doesn't mean you have to grant it. As long as your decision is supported by the law, as long as it's not uh, arbitrary, capricious, or whimsical, you can deny this. And I think the community members have spoken loud and clear about how detrimental this is to the nature and character of the community. And these folks have not spoken to the benefit and the needs of this community for a project like this. So in light of the application's failure to meet your review criteria, I would hope that you would be convinced that this project does not warrant the granting of a special permit and has not met the minimum standards of review under that criteria. And I hope that uh, when you review this in its totality, that you have, uh, uh, you have the ability, the confidence, and the strength to determine that this permit should not be allowed and it should be denied because it doesn't meet the criteria that the town has set to establish, uh, to, uh, to approve something like this. I also have something too that's a little less pleasant. And then I'll be done, Mr. Wade. No, public hearing. Uh, um, prior to the last hearing, um, I was sitting in the audience and I overheard a conversation with one of the board members and my, na my neighbor. And it, took, it was taken aback by it because it seemed predisposed that uh, um, the member was uh, speaking in behalf of this project without even the opening of the public hearing. And I think uh, that uh, that would require a recusal. Uh, members of this community have the right to do one of two things. They, when they serve on a board, they have the right to partake and act on that board as a voting member, being an impartial member of that board to receive the information and make a ruling. Or they abdicate that authority and they become a private citizen that can speak out on behalf. Mr. Camosa, you had a conversation with my neighbors where you were very, when I had to make a comment that says, I hope that's not the case because then why are we even having a public hearing? I would hope that, at that in light of that, in light of my request, that you recuse yourself from any vote going forward. Thank you. Thank you. So I did have one question about, um, you would, I, I believe you had mentioned at uh, the last meeting the potential of having a community solar project. Mm -hmm. um, because that, that, that is, so first of all, I, I'd also like to remind the residents of Deerfield that we voted on, on solar bylaws a few years ago and it was pretty much because we wanted to allow solar both uh, residential at people's homes, so we have a bylaw for that, um, large scale, which is two megawatts or less, and extra large, which is up to six megawatts. And, and we voted some bylaws for that, and, and I, I believe we, we did that because we thought that uh, alternative energy is a good thing. So I just want to remind people of that. Um, having, having said that, um, the benefits to the community. So 300 homes powered is, is to me, that's important. Um, if there were 300 homes in Deerfield, maybe that's more important to people in Deerfield. I, you know, we all have our own personal things. I, you know, 300 homes anywhere is, is useful, I would, I would think. Um, so have you talked about any more community yeah. solar and how it can benefit the community more? The community solar uh, is, is definitely an aspect of this that, that could work, that we, we can go out to, to people and connect them to a listserv to, to sign up and purchase the power from this. We, we can definitely... Yeah, I mean, so there's a lot of optionality once we get into the smart program, and community solar is one of those, um, one of those pieces. Also, looking at a um, public entity off taker, so if the town wanted to purchase some of the energy as well, these are all options that are available um, that we would love to, um, you know, entertain that conversation when the time comes. But it's for now, it's you know, it's getting the special permit, and um, and the smart program does have some. They, there's some incentive there they for incentivize community solar. Community actually, solar. So, so it's, it would be mu mutually beneficial for, you know, for us to pursue that. And I I'm, I'm don't know all the rules and regs on that, but if you sign up, do you get a lower electricity rate? Would, would, would uh, it's, residents yeah. of Deerfield benefit financially or not necessarily? It's, yeah, I mean, t typically people wouldn't really want to sign up if it wasn't a deal. So, mm -hmm. yeah, typically rates are um, at or below. Um, what you would be paying currently on your um, on your bill. 
But you're saying would have to, you're, you're looking for approval before you would commit to that. Before we finally know and are able to, to market, yes, because we need to secure a spot in the, the smart queue that's launching coming up. Uh, yeah, because we, I mean, we would need to ensure that there's local demand for the electricity. So, there, I mean, there's some steps down the road that we would love to pursue, but yeah. And again, that's incentivized on, on our end, and um, that's that's the plan that we have for, for going this way. And I wonder if we, we could just also make a quick comment on, on the pilot agreement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that it, it is a formal binding contract that is not a, a gift. It's a, it's a fully um, state-backed um, contract that we, we agree to pay a rate. Uh, it's not it's not meant to be a negotiation for reduction in taxes paid at all, and there actually is a 2%. Um, so basically how it works is you estimate the, um, the amount of tax that would be paid over the life of the project um, using a 2% inflation adjuster each year um, under traditional methods, and um, it's to the benefit um, both us and the town to lock a, a given dollar value in um, that's not below the total amount of tax that would be paid under traditional methods. So, um, so we're not. It's not a negotiated reduction. It's just simply fixing the. Um, it's a fixed cash. Flow. Fixing the payment. And yeah. I believe we did this with the, the yes. one up on the. We did. At the quarry. Yeah. yeah. We did. And so, we do that and so we've, we've, we're following that precedent that was yeah. um, established there. Yeah. And to answer your question earlier, John, that the town of Deerfield has entered into a. Uh, community aggregation contract uh, that every resident will uh, participate in and actually once you get notified you'll have to each individual in town will have to opt out of this if they don't want to participate and one of their uh, this company's main aggregations they go after solar projects not necessarily this one but they go after all types of solar projects mm -hmm. Already have permission to tie into the grid that exists here already, so they're not going to like. We're, we're waiting on the, the final uh, impact statement from them, so the system impact study. We're almost completed with the system impact study. We've applied. They, they have all the information. They're conducting the study. So we have authorization to interconnect based on what we hear the upgrade costs will be when those get back to us uh, in the next couple of weeks. It, Eversource takes their, takes their time um, doing things. So. Mm -hmm. And then your connector, it doesn't, your wires that are going to connect the solar panels to the grid, mm -hmm. you don't go down your access road, it doesn't look on the, no. do you have an easement down that? I do. Yeah, that was, it, it was a little extra long and we were worried about having to get an, an easement along the town's roadway to be able to run along Set Right Road and also trenching and, and disturbing neighbors there. So we were able to get an access along the southern uh, parcel um, there so that we can, we can run there and keep the distance shorter and lower impact on everybody. So I just want to talk about a procedural thing. Um, this is site plan, special permit, and stormwater. Well, the planning board, our, our history is that we hire a, a peer review person to make sure we're doing all the technical things correctly, and if we need anybody to review the stormwater or anything else, we, we would hire peer review. Um, so given the, the fact that it is there's a lot of items in our bylaws that we have to make sure we're, uh, we're looking at properly, I would recommend that we, we do enlist a peer review, at least for the uh, administrative review of this. Does that sound? Stormwater, for sure. And then stormwater is a bunch of calculations that I can't read them, and I'd like to have someone go over it. And, uh, you know, so now we have, uh, back in August, yeah. we didn't have all the... Information now we do, so we could have that. Uh, that's well done. Have that that looked at. So, so that's that's why right. we are not surprised by that. All right. And with yeah. Pat or so a yeah. So what we'd uh, probably like to do is have Pat do the kind of Pat. You call it the administrative <laughs> technical review, kind of, or to to make sure. So we'll, we'll have to clarify yeah. what you mean by that. Because I mean, there's different levels. Like, like I could just say, oh, check they done this and this before right. I can go through the entire bylaws and regulations and ensure. <coughs> well, like we did last week. I mean, what have you met? What haven't you met? Right. So what have you partially met? Um, so we need to go through that. And then when you get to some of the technical things, like the groundwater and all those kind of things and the stormwater runoff, then we'd have a technical, um, which is getting a little more difficult, apparently, to get someone. But I think the CONCOM did get someone for... Uh, that other project. So they did. that was the main reason I asked because the, the schedule. Yeah. The effect that'll have on schedule. Yeah. So um, I, 
we have sort of a list of people that um, you know we've kind of vetted by the town, so we, we don't have to put it out and take a long time getting someone. But so, but it might take us two weeks to get someone, two weeks to look at it. So we're, we're talking at least another, probably another month. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Another comment. Do I have to say my name again? Yep. You're all set. Uh, I have a question. When you brought up the community solar, that's that's a whole separate issue. And if you're, are you familiar with how they work and how they act? Who? I'm asking. I'm putting it out to anybody because I am. Could you tell us the price per kilowatt installed that's going to benefit residents in this community? We've not conducted that analysis yet. Then how can you make an assumption and assume that that's going to benefit us when you're just looking for your stamp to get your approval? I am familiar with it. It's different per every household. It's different per what every consumer uses for how many kilowatts that's on their bill. I wanted solar. Solar is a wonderful thing, but what you're proposing is not a good fit. And I urge you... That's a totally separate issue. We're here on just the solar farm, not on community solar. That's completely different. We and a do. lot of times when you go with an independent contractor, it's actually quite a bit cheaper for the consumers to be able to choose when you go to open market versus putting it out to bid. But we already have mass solar. We have interest-free loans through local banks, and we have some of the best solar uh, accesses to, um, excuse me, I lost my train of thought, but financial resources in the state. And I think what we're proposing is two completely different things. And we're, we have a hurricane coming tomorrow. You know, we have a dirt road that they're asking for, for an eighth of a mile extension that the town's going to maintain with just gravel. What do you think is going to happen with two to four inches of groundwater run down off the mountain from Conway, down through my yard, because I'm not at a butter, just because I can see it, though, it makes me a visual of a butter. That's going to be devastating. And I understand we're going to go and put grass in there that's good for bees. But we, right now what we do is we do crop management. We rotate what's good for the soil. We do multiple different crops, multiple different times of the season. And what we're proposing is to take a piece of land and make it stagnant. That's not going to do anything to feed any families for the next 20 to 30 years. Thank you. All right, so I would uh, propose just that. Just real quick? Sure. All right, I promise I'll be quick. I just have one, one request I get, I guess, before anybody goes and votes and anybody does this, because somebody brought up something earlier that, that kind of was a aha, and that is if you want to think about what this looks like to the community, then go up on top of Mount Sugarloaf and look northwest. And this thing is going to be plopped right in the middle of a whole bunch of rolling farm fields. And this thing is going to just be a nice big glare. I don't care how big your cedars get, you're going to see this thing from Sugarloaf, and that's what people are going to see. It's not just set right. It's not just plain or lee. This is standing up on Sugarloaf and representing what Deerfield now looks like. In the middle of your farm fields, you got a 10-acre solar panel. So I think we'd, um, I think we keep the public hearing open so that we can um, hear, right, because then when we do the peer review, we need to hear from the peer review people, which might be new information, which needs to come up. So, um, so I would uh, propose we do that. Um, I, I appreciate everybody talking, and I, I think the main, the, the main issue I'm hearing is sight and the visual aspect of it. Um, seems like we're kind of addressing a lot of the other things, burying the lines and, um, I don't know, a whole host of other things. So the site thing keeps coming back. Um, so we hear that. I got a lot to say, but I don't, we'll, we'll do it next, next time, I guess. Um, I, I guess part of it is that I wish we could see what it's going to look like because I, I, I just tell you, I, don't know if people have seen a 10 acre, six foot high, six to eight foot high uh, panels that have grass in between them and uh, hedges around them because uh, uh, the, the ones I see don't look that horrible. It's, I just got to say that. We can, so, we can uh, work with. So I think it would be really helpful if yeah. you brought something that gave us that. We'll, we'll do a visual, that uh, image. a full and, visual and, rendering and of it. You know, I'd ask the neighbors to do the same thing and, and see what you come up with. Um, 
We'll do a visual rendering of it, so we'll we'll submit a plan and uh, with with somebody with um I don't know the exact program, but we'll do a few different photos and then have them populate those yeah. photos with the yeah. with the panels and what it what it will look like. Yeah. And I mean, people mention that people can see it from, you know, all over, and I'm I'm not sure if that's true well, or not. It, it it might be, if it is, we should know that. But um, there are there are a lot of these around the state and the country right now. Um, We'll, we'll do visual renderings and right. bring those in at, at different points with different heights of trees on them. All right. Great. And, and the process for getting the external reviewer, you guys will find somebody and then do we post some initial funding that you Yeah, so that? that's the thing. We need to get a quote so that you can then put some money up um, and, and then they can do the work. Okay. So, again, I think we can probably get, um, well, we can do that with Pat tomorrow probably. Yeah. All right. So we'll know that one. And then, um, again, from this list of other people we have, hopefully we can get someone. Okay. And I think it's really the um, stormwater report to go over. Uh, this was the CONCOM already did. The CONCOM already uh, Look at this. A approved it effectively. Yes. But it was, it was an RDA, so there's no stormwater. It's outside of their jurisdiction. I right. So they, no, no, right. So they didn't do a, they didn't do a study on it. That's why. We, that's why. Yeah. And then I think we should check again with the DPW about that road. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were? Yeah, suggesting? the road. Yeah. 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 And I, I, would I would love that to be part of the engineering report so that we had a real sense for what that, like, post enhancement management. The would be. maintenance, because, right, maintenance. they've got the construction of it here or the upgrade are, of it. Are we able, and I'm not sure exactly how it works with you guys, but to, to take on the maintenance of that portion of the road? Is that something that we can we can do with you guys? I mean, we're happy to write that into our operations Yeah, into the operations plan. and maintenance. Yeah. We don't, I mean, we don't want you guys headache. stuck with something that yeah. is a, you know, a liability. We're happy to maintain that. Well, that's um, why I think we should get the... Uh, I think it's something mm -hmm. the town needs to address yeah, that. That's so kind of right. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're not trying to get you stuck with the road maintenance. Yeah. Right. That's the thing. It hasn't been used, so no one's going to use it except for you. Yeah. So the town's not going to pay to fix it just for you. Right. But we'd have to get that kind of in writing or something. We just want a building permit away from having to. So, you know, somebody wants Somebody's to house out there. Right, right, right. Oh, that's true. I don't want to speak, but I think a lot of times that's like a, it's a, a town road, but it's unmaintained. And if you were going to do something with it, you have to bring it up to specs. I believe that's what they used to do in the past, but I'm not speaking for the town. Mm -hmm. I think when there's a project. I know, but not he's speaking point. what he thinks he knows, and I'm speaking what I think I know. <laughs> so uh, I think it has to be upgraded if you're going to pull a building permit and it was not maintained. Uh, I think you have to bring it up to standards. But that could be a, a separate condition. Right, right. Something the town needs to address, right. not yeah. us. Somebody that really knows what they're talking about. All right, so do I have a motion to, uh, okay, so this, uh, before we do that, we have to look at a calendar scan. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> um, we do ask for a uh, computerized copy of it. Do we have, we have the whole same. report on? Yeah, we can send a PDF. Tomorrow. Easy to send a PDF of everything. Yeah. That'd be great. So we can put it up on the website. And there'll be a copy here, too. We'll, yeah. we'll leave a copy here. And there's, um, are those the same? Are they the same thing? Yes. The site plans? Yes. So we can leave the site plans up, up on the back there, too. There's a bigger, bigger plans. Do you know how long that road was? Okay, can I ask you, how long was from the end of set right that's maintained to your access road? Feet, yeah, 450, 450, 500 feet, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was looking at my calendar. So we're, we have a scheduled meeting, um, planning board on October 1st, but that's too soon. Um, and then our, our next meeting is the 8th. Because it couldn't be the 5th, because voting is the next day. We can't use this building. We can't use the 12th, because that's um, Veterans Day. <coughs> we could go to the 19th. The 19th should give everybody plenty of time. To That's a lot of time. What date did you have for October? Oh, sorry. You're right. I'm in the wrong month. 
Take it back. The eighth is Columbus Day, so we're going the first. We're doing the first, so then see, that's like, the thing. If we wanted to do soon. two in October, we could go to the 22nd like, or the 29th. Ninth. That's what you're talking about. Okay. Well, I think the 29th makes more sense. One, two, three, four, fifth. It's the fifth Monday in the month. Yep. Can't have a meeting because no one schedules things for fifth month. <laughs> right. No, that's why it's free because nobody schedules anything. Yeah. Could be a good one. Does that look good for you guys? Uh, so it works for me. Day 29. 29th. 29th. It's, it's a Monday. So the 1st and 29th. So then we'd meet on the 1st and then the 29th. What's the 18th? What time does that mean, Sir John? The which one? The 18th. No. I mean uh, the first. first. First is our regular planning board meeting. Seven o'clock. Yeah. But that's too early to have these guys back. No, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah. just want to know the time. So yeah. I'd Seven. I'd be on time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, the, the meeting that you weren't at that we thought you were at. We had it wrong tonight, too, so mm. a few of those. Just these so that 29 looks good? That's fine. All right. Does that work for you guys? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's shoot for October 29th, and in the meantime, we'll get a, uh, we'll let you know who the engineer is, and they'll get the review. But if you can send us these electronically, sure. all the plans, that'd be great. So I move that we, uh, I move that we continue this hearing, the public, I move that we can the continue the public hearing to, uh, what did I just say? 29th of September. 7 o'clock. October? October. That's what I meant. October 29th at 7 o'clock. I move that. Anybody second? I'll second it. Kip seconds. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So thank you. If you can tell people we don't send other, um, we don't send other mailings, but. Um, right. So the 29th of October, 7 o'clock here. And we'll continue this public hearing. Thank you very much for everybody coming, and uh, thanks for your patience. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got One, my card two, in the back. Three, I can five. Thank you. Zero, zero. How many of those copies do we have? Yeah. 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 That was yeah. circulating. Yeah. Yeah. Hospital use permit for a 2,706 square foot four room bed and breakfast to be owned, owner occupied, and in compliance with all building health and fire codes. Do we have any? I don't really, I don't really have a problem with it, but it's important that the uh, ZBA issue it to the, <clears throat> excuse me, to the property owners and not to the property, because if they issue it to that location, it's good forever. Ah, uh, good. And we've had some issues on Ro uh, River Road where bed and breakfasts have been turned into other types of facilities. So, yeah. so they should issue special just to permit the owners. Okay. To the owners. To the owner, not to the. Not a change of, not a use yeah. to this, to this Yes. Oh, no. Uh, I think we just are asked for comment. Oh, okay. comment. Yeah. <laughs> but, no. The, uh, the zoning board does. Mm -hmm. zoning board. Um, is there any other business not reasonably anticipated? So, my only um, quick thing, I might not be able to attend the November 8th meeting, which is the one scheduled for um, continuation of the Dollar General. And oh, given, given the fact that- That we all have to be there. That so many people have to be there, and we didn't check with them. Um, that wasn't November 8th. November 8th. November 8th is the 100 uh, Railroad, blah, blah, blah. And- Both? Yeah. Um, I didn't have one from November 8th. That was, yeah, well, because you know why? When you, we were looking at the 12th. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the 12th we is Veterans Day. We went from 5th to 12th to 8th. Because we were thinking. 8th is a Thursday. And you weren't here. We don't know if you could make it either. That's a Thursday. That's a Thursday? Yeah. I didn't know if it was a Monday or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that's the railroad road. Railroad. And you can't make it on I, what they were also Dollar General? We had also uh, continued Dollar General tonight. I'm pretty sure. Okay. 
did not bring that file with me, so I have to check that one. I also have office. different notebooks, but I think. <laughs> So anyway, I just put, let me just put that out there, and we can think about it over the next uh, week or so. And then on our October first meeting, we, if we need to change the date, we can. So do you have something else, Wendy? For us? I'm just wondering if you saw the letter from Attorney Costa that I sent you about Cumberland Farms. I did not. Is it in our box? Or? No, I just I got oh. it late earlier tonight, I and I sent it on to you. Since noon okay. time, so no. All right, because there's talk about issuing a temporary occupancy permit. And um, I have real questions about that, about the safety of doing that, and uh, before the access is completed, which was a condition of the permit. Right. Um, so let me ask the so planning board because as I um, a driver, because I was down here a week ago or so, and um, was consulted on this, and I said that the planning board issued uh, approved the site plan review based on the entrance and exit off of Route Five and Ten. And that we would not have approved that if it didn't exist. Yeah. So apparently, the building inspector can issue a temporary uh, certificate of occupancy if if they believe that it's going to be completed in a short period of time. Well, there's more to it. Now, I again just said I only was, I was only speaking as myself, one person on the planning board. So I'm bringing it to you. But um, I think we can at least advise our building inspector that we. Well, I'll give you a copy of the letter, Thank but. Um, and if you have something to say, I would welcome that. Um, but my understanding is that um, it's not uncommon to issue a temporary um, occupancy permit for a project when it's a smaller item, and it's yeah. usually something like landscaping. Yeah. But when it's something like a safety issue like that, Huge. that's not yeah. normally done. And so, um, you know, I'm just bringing that forward because it, it concerns me. So and, and what power I, does the planning board have, I guess? Well, um, told, one of the things... I was told in front of many people that he would not issue a temporary... Well, I, um, I hear that there's a meeting to discuss it again. Okay. So. What's their problem? I'm sorry? What's their problem? Their problem is um, uh, they were proceeding, and it was determined, um, Mark Stinson, who's our, DEP. the DEP uh, person that we work with, went by and saw some violations and closed the project down. And they've got to address those, um, and they are addressing those. Um, but you know, they have a project, and they have deadlines, and it's going beyond that, and it's a problem for them. Um, and you know, yeah, the, vi the violations involved the, the contractor didn't put up enough silt fence, and so they they since did that. But since there was a cease and desist order, they have to go through the legal procedures to get it removed. So um, they still haven't got the curb cut. Yeah, they did. They got their curb cut. They, they're all set to go. Matter of fact, they got most of the dirt in. They just have to pour the concrete for the head walls for the piping. And that would be enough. It's, it's just that they wouldn't, the, the temporary would have them not utilizing that access, that curb cut. It would be all in and out on Elm Street. So I'll share that memo with you so you can see that. Um, Adam also said that he has, you know, usually advises boards to, in this kind of situation, to have some kind of rules in place that uh, an inspector would have those boards sign off, saying, "Yeah, go ahead." So. That they've done what there's what we approve. Right. Yeah. We have that hasn't been the practice of this board, and it's the enforcement officer is usually who does it. So. That would be kind of a new thing, I think, but maybe it's a good thing. Pat? Yeah. I'd just like to add briefly, I believe you did or issue a stormwater permit for this Cumbria's property as well. I'd have to double check on that. I'm pretty sure it was. And um, the stormwater regulations require that you um, issue an order of completion. And I don't think uh, we have followed up on that. On projects to date and so this might be a good place to start that okay so I don't know. stormwater the planning order, order, order of completion mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. wow and is there an inspection involved and in who does that somebody uh, presumably um the engineer who had done the initial review would be an appropriate party to go out and determine if it had been uh, constructed according to the plans 
All right, let's. let's Do you out. remember who did the prior review? We can, we can figure that out. It's, okay. I don't remember. I'd have to go back to the records, but it's easily, okay. easily yeah. discoverable. Yeah. No, I'd in the box. Offhand, did that, you know? Okay. The, the lady there, I can't think of her name. Sarah Campbell. Sarah Campbell. She did. She did come. Uh, I, I so. remember her. Possible here that she did come. Was, We've done a bunch of these, so that's why my, my brain doesn't. Back. She might have done Sugarloaf. I don't. I, well, yeah, we'll just have to go back and look. I, she did um, I think I there were more issues than just the silt barrier or whatever. Um, there were some delineation issues as well. So yeah. that were the fault of the uh, wetland contact. specialist. I also just my quick observation. I want to. We should go back to the site plan. The sign that says downtown Deerfield, is that in the right place? Huh? It's kind of further in. I'm not sure it's the most noticeable sign. And no. our, our intention was that it was noticeable. Well, I see it. I sit at the light there all the if time. If you come that way, <laughs> you, but it depends on which way you're yeah. coming. I guess. But anyway, well, I've I've heard complaints about the sign, anyways, in general. Really? <laughs> what? I've heard only good things, but what? No, I heard. Why do we need another sign? That was it. Yeah. And why was the sign so small? Because theirs is so big. You know? Well, that's why I want to double check because we had it on the site plan that mm -hmm. size, and we said it had to be this and that. So I just want to make sure they did follow the directions. So. Yeah. I guess it looked nicer to me than what I had seen it was going to look like. So, yeah. okay. anyway. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we'll work. So you'll you'll do up. A, are you clear on what you're going to do up a quote for this set right road? Yes. Okay. I and it can be less than what you had, uh, uh, we had discussed. And do you want me to do that similar type of review on the railroad yard oh. property, or did you want to do just a, a simple, you know, review of whether they've complied with the basic requirements? I, I think we should start with a simple comply, because we, we don't even know how far we are going to go with that until the usage. Well, I was going to say we shouldn't do anything on that Maybe until we know right. about it. I mean, my, my initial letter was similar to what I had written on the on the, the previous Lake Street development plan. Was, you know, well, this isn't allowed under the yeah. the, the the use table, and so the, the the variance application for a use variance would need to be followed up on before it would come really to your attention. So that would be the first thing that I would do, and that would be very simple at this right. point. Yeah, that'd be great to do. I, at that point, I because I looked back at those materials today in order to. Remind myself, and uh, I had filed like a three-page short okay. letter, and I could do that similar thing with that, and then determine later if you wanted to do yeah. a further review. So is everybody the regulatory. clear about that? That that's yeah. the one up at Railroad Yard. They have to get a variance before they come for a site plan, and the variance is from the ZBA. But there's a question of whether you're even allowed to ask for a variance in a. Uh, the use variance was use. allowed for the Lake Street property. A similar type was allowed at yeah. that point in time. But we might, it might be, you know, t to the board's, in the board's best interest and the town's best interest to have town council revisit that question. And in any case, yeah. if it were allowed, it would, that would have to be provided by the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah. And they're also asking for a dimensional variance. So both of those would need to be addressed. From ZBA. Right. Yeah. All right. So I will go ahead and get you a quick three-letter review on that. Um, and an estimate on a full regulatory review on this on particular this project. Try to have both of those two by the end of the week. If and I'll talk to Priscilla or someone about getting a, um, some, a peer review for the stormwater. Just right. Like um, the other thing is that I'm gonna, I, I was going to ask the um, administrative staff, and I have not had an ability to do that yet, to uh, provide information on the fees paid on all these projects. Right. Because from what information I have, and I don't have, in, I don't have complete information, yep. so it's possible that this has all been taken care of. But on each of these projects, and this one today, um, there had been materials that had been submitted indicating a, a certain level of payment, and it's significantly less. Um, I think it showed that um, there was $350 paid. And by my calculation, the total amount paid for site plan review, special permit, and stormwater uh, would be $6,600. So there's a significant yes. outstanding balance, if those figures are correct. And, and I know it was mentioned that they were waiting, the applicants are waiting for us to tell them how much it costs. So we need to do On that. tonight's. Tonight in, I think the railroad yard. If that Both through. of them appear to yeah. have been. Way I think they're just getting. Build the $250 without the disturbance right. 
fee on top of it, which is a calculation, but they provide the application provides a disturbed right. land figure from which that can be calculated. Is that right? Hasn't even paid two hundred and fifty. Yeah. Anyway. Right, oh, um, that just reminded me. We have an A and R for set right that we could actually do right now. We're doing A and R. Okay. Works. Okay. Thank you. So. Um, if you all remember, they had, this was too, too, uh, this is, this is too much. Yes, I don't know. So said right road is out here. Yep. This is a lot, this, this is, um, this currently is a solid boundary, so that's a lot and that's a lot, and they want to remove that to make this all one lot. Yeah. Was that with the solar projects? This yeah. is what, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had, because otherwise they wanted to get variances on yeah. this and that. Yeah, so. sit back there. It's, yeah. Yeah. Because it's a good property. Um, I so, was wondering why they needed to make it one of the good, but it's a set back. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. otherwise they would have to yes, I stop it. Yeah. Or we could have done a variance, and, but, right, right, but right. we actually suggested to them do this. And, it's all the same owner. Yeah. Any uh, issues with this? No. No. They paid their hundred fifty dollars. Motion. Motion to endorse. I'll second the motion. Discussion. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Oh, I can make this Abstain. down. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Max and. Yep. Max no. Kip. No. John, we, I know that we spoke last time, but I, I was questioning the fact that when somebody comes into a field and puts solar in there and they're pushing pi, uh, pilings into the ground, we consider the whole 10 acres is disturbed? That's what we ended up going with because it was impossible to say otherwise. And, and they're running tractors and equipment on the, the whole ground. So, mm -hmm. But that's also why we came up with that maximum $3,000 yeah. yeah. so that your calculation... That Why would it included the maximum thirty-two? How could it be? How could it be six thousand? You said six thousand. SPR and special permit. Because they're getting both site plan review and special permit, and they both have two hundred fifty dollars plus the same disturbed land fee attached to it. Uh, we charge them disturbed land on two different applications. That's your uh, fee schedule. I can read it to you. We, this is a uh, schedule of administrative fees, section 3.3, .3, site plan review, $250 basic fee, plus $10 per 1,000 square foot of land disturbance, up to a maximum of land disturbance of 3,000. So the maximum fee on that could be the 3250 Special permit review, same thing, $250 basic fee, plus $10 per 1,000 square feet of land disturbance, up to a maximum land disturbance fee of 3,000. The stormwater permit is a one hundred dollar fee. I don't see why we should charge them. It's just because it's a different fee. I mean, if they were separate and they didn't have to do them, I could see doing one for one and one for the other. But I don't see why we should charge them that amount. It's certainly within the purview of the board to waive fees if you see fit. And I'd I'd like to go back and see what we did at the quarry because I I don't think we no. did both. And I think they required us. Did they require a special? I'd, I'd have to go. I don't know. Yeah. They got the use variance. So then they didn't have to get a special permit. They were allowed to go for it without one. So in their case, it was just site plan review. Uh, and the so let's, I'll put that in my notes if you remember to bring that up and we can okay. consider waiving that because that's, the, yeah, I don't think the intention was to. Oh, we'll hear about it though. Double. Anything else? Sign time. Oh, sorry, sign time. Is there a mylar? It was at the bottom of the pile here. Go that way. 
Alright. Damn. Ah. Continuation worksheet. Ah. I forgot to have them signed. Yeah, let's let them have them sent back. Yeah, signatures are fine. We got them to do it the other night. The railroad guys, right? Uh, no. Yes, but no. Because we, but we, oh, then we changed the, we changed <laughs> the, the wrong date. date. But I got the email confirmation that they would go the eighth. I would still have them sign the form, but wait till you finalize the date. Yeah. You're going to change that date. Well, we thought we had finalized it. Yeah, I know. Oh, here. Yeah. I'll sign. October 29th, we're continuing this one too. Okay. Is that the month you said this might be Monday's reading for the job? Yeah. Well, that doesn't happen too often. No, it doesn't. We already had a month like that this year. I think it's twice, twice a year. All right, next meeting, 10 one We don't have anything to talk about. And we actually have um, none of these public hearings are continued today. I'm just going to say that, that would be a big really? old relief. We could do um, something interesting. I'm not even sure there will be much to update. But So if there's not any other business, do we? Not have the meeting? <laughs> Cancel it? I mean, there's, I'm sure there's administrative things, but I'm sure we could also take a break. Well, we can we, we don't know until no, we don't know. Yeah. So, all right. Schedule it. Just have a short meeting. Yeah. All right. Gen 1, thank you, everyone. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Somebody move to, move to end this meeting. I move to yes. end the meeting. Any second, Roger? I'll second the motion. Second, Kip. All in favor? Yep. Yeah, yep. Bye. 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 Bye